enjoy this before, then um, welcome. Uh, today's class is a restorative exercise class. So we're actually going to be working on feet and ankles as a focus today. So what I am going to encourage everybody to do is if you can find, if you didn't, you know, check this out beforehand, find a rolled towel, um, maybe a little bit of a folded blanket or something that you can find that you can either step on or put underneath your body in a few places. If you don't have it, that's fine. You can, uh, you can find uh, something afterwards, but for right now, if you can go snag one quickly, uh, it will help you out for your practice. So garden grooves is, you know, kind of the theme of, of these classes. So um, each one is going to have a little bit of an element of something that you can kind of take away, something you can practice on your own for the next little while that might help things in terms of keeping you know, things moving, keeping joints moving, maybe getting a little bit more flexibility in some places as you get ready for your garden season. So let's get started today. We're actually going to start standing. And if anyone has a little bit of challenge getting up and down, you can use the wall, you can use a chair for a little bit of balance and go nice and slow. If you have to skip a step, you know, can't quite keep up with the sequence, then that's totally fine. Skip a step and then uh, you can move on to the next one and catch up with us. So everybody's going to come up to standing. And the first thing that we're going to do today is we're going to see how our ground connection feels to the floor before we get things moving. So I want you to just get your feet down on the floor. And what we're going to start doing is we're going to start shifting from side to side. So I've got my feet lined up underneath my hips. They're not super close together. And you're just letting your feet kind of feel the weight shift from one side to the other. So you don't spend a lot of time barefoot, spend a lot of time in shoes or supportive you know, things under your feet, then even just feeling the weight shift to some places where it doesn't normally get can be a change. So now we're gonna shift forward and back. So I'll turn to the side so you can kind of see my weight's coming onto the front of my feet and then back more into my heels, maybe not quite so far that I'm falling over backwards. And as you shift your weight back, I want you to see, can you lift your toes a little bit off the floor and then let them come back down. And this is where, if you spend a lot of time in heeled shoes, shifting your weight back a little bit and letting those toes lift might be a really, really different sensation. So don't worry if things don't move a whole lot right now. All right, now we're gonna try balancing on one foot. We're gonna see how that feels before we do all these moves. So standing with your feet at a decent distance. So maybe underneath your hips again. So just not with their feet, you know, stacked really close together. I want you to shift onto one foot. So I'm coming onto my left foot and I'm picking up my right foot. Seeing if I can balance there. Maybe you can see your, your ankle will roll around. Your foot might shift around on the floor. See what happens. See if you can hang out there for a second or two. This is where your wall can be a really nice support if you need that little bit of extra. All right, give that a break. That side might feel like it's done some work and then we're going to do the other side. So whichever foot you weren't on that side, that time, you're going to shift onto that foot. So I want you to bring the weight onto that foot and see if you can balance on that side, lift up the other one. And if you've had maybe an ankle injury or a foot injury or something along the way, you may find some big differences from one leg to the other. Maybe not even an injury or a surgery and you might still see that there's a lot of difference from one side to the other. All those things are just interesting to notice. All right, we've checked out our balance. I want you to take a little bit of a walk around. Let all of your feet feel the ground. So as you take a step, kind of push off the ground. If you're wearing shoes or in your socks, you can also take those off if you're in your home or somewhere that you can. All right, we're gonna make our way down. Okay, so we've done a little bit of checking out the balance, see how wobbly things feel. Let's come on all the way down. <clears throat> and we're gonna come right down onto our back. So 
If you like a little bit of support underneath your head and your shoulders, you can do that. If coming down all the way, that leaves your head tipped back uncomfortably, you know, leaves your neck in an uncomfortable spot, then this might be a place where you can take that lower folded towel and just slide it underneath there. Okay, so now we're gonna check out some foot moves. So I want you to take your right leg nice and long, lay it on the floor, and then bring your left knee in towards you. And we're just gonna let things stretch out along the back of the leg a little bit. With your right leg down, I want you to pull the top of the foot back towards you. So you're flexing your ankle, that dorsiflexion. So the shape of this ankle here is what we wanna think about, pressing the back of the knee down into the floor. Take a nice deep breath and let it go. And then let's switch and go to the other leg. So you're gonna bring your right knee in this time and your left leg is gonna to go to the floor. You can flex your ankles. So drawing the top of your foot back towards your shin, pressing the back of the left knee into the floor and draw your right knee in towards you a little bit. If the front of the knee is a bit of a challenge, you can bring your hands to the back of your thigh instead. Take a breath, let it go. All right, then you're gonna bring both knees in. So you're gonna stack them up, maybe lining up your knee kind of over that hip a little bit. So bringing them in too far makes it a little bit easy. So you're gonna slide them out. If bringing them all the way out there is a bit too much, then you're gonna find a place that feels good for you. And now we're gonna circle her right ankle. So we're gonna let our ankle move a little bit without having the weight of our body on it. So we're not standing on it. Get those ankles moving. So you're picking one direction to circle that right ankle, and then we're gonna go in the other direction. And I want you to do the circle slow enough that you can try to draw a really round circle. And then you can let your right leg relax, and we're gonna go to the left ankle. So you're gonna pick a direction and start the circle. Part of the reason that we're looking at feet and ankles as part of our preparation for the garden season, you can switch directions with that left ankle, is because they're really our connection to the ground. And even though you might spend a lot of your time out of the garden with shoes on, you might actually spend time in the garden more barefoot or in sandals or something that's less supportive than you normally do. And a lot of that garden surface is not really even. Okay, you can let both legs relax, bring your knees in towards you, give a little hug, take a little rock from side to side, let your low back relax. So when we think about that connection to the ground and, and stability, you know, especially in the garden, we're carrying things, we're doing things, you really want those feet and ankles to be able to move in all the ways to navigate the terrain. Okay, so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your rolled towel, or fold a towel, we're gonna to fold it up a little bit and we're gonna bring it behind us. So you can either bring it behind the back of your pelvis and come down, or you can come down and press yourself up and slide it underneath there. And then we're gonna increase that stretch a little bit. So bring your leg back down, your right leg, reach it down onto the floor and bring your left knee in towards you, flex both ankles. So we're gonna do that one more time. Breathe in, let it go, and then let's switch. So your opposite leg reaches down. For me, that's my left leg. Flex both ankles, press the left knee into the floor. Now with our pelvis raised, you're getting a little bit more uh, maybe intensity of sensation across the front of that extended leg. All right, good, bring both feet to the floor. You're gonna press into the floor, lift yourself up into a low bridge and take that out from underneath the back of you. And we're gonna roll ourselves to the side and up. So this is where things are gonna get fun. So you can sit up on your bolster if that helps you out. We're gonna see if we can get our feet moving. So especially if you wear pointy shoes or tight shoes, this one's gonna be fun. You're gonna get yourself to a place where you can get your hands on your feet. This is, where, this is where you're gonna get intimate with your feet today. You're gonna to give them a little bit of moves. So we're gonna bring our hands across the top of our feet. My thumbs are on the top of my hands and my fingers are underneath the bottom. And I'm just gonna massage gently across the top of my foot in this direction. 
and really stretch out that skin and let a little bit of space come in between those bones that will come down and attach to my toes. This is a really nice way to do a little foot massage. If being on the floor is uncomfortable, you can come right up onto a chair and do the same thing. All right, now you're gonna wiggle your toes on that same foot. And then you're gonna take your opposite hand and we're gonna interlace our fingers in between our toes. So this is our hand to toe, toe spreader. And if you're the kind of person that doesn't love your feet, then, you know, I guess this class is gonna be an interesting, fun one for you to try. So you're gonna get as many of your fingers in between the toes as you can. And if you can't get them all in there, that's fine. Don't force anything. And then you're just gonna gently wiggle your fingers. If wiggling your fingers is excruciating, then you can just hold them there for a couple of breaths. A little bit of space between our toes. This will matter in a few moments. All right, let's let that go. So you're gonna take your fingers out and then I want you to wiggle your toes again. See if you can spread them apart. See if you can move them a little bit on their own. And then you're gonna do that foot massage one more time. So fingertips are gonna come into the bottom of your foot, kind of that midline. Your thumbs are gonna come across the top and you're gonna move your thumbs kind of laterally spreading the space in between those little bones. So one of the things that can help with stability of the foot is, is by letting those toes splay and letting the front of the foot be able to create different shapes on the ground as it changes underneath you. And so when our toes don't move so well, or when there's a lot of weight on the front of our feet, sometimes that mobility can be limited. All right, we're gonna move to the other foot. So left foot is gonna do the same thing. First, what you're gonna do is you're just going to wiggle your toes, see how things are going there. Okay, maybe things move, maybe they don't, we're gonna do the massage. So fingertips to the middle of the bottom of your foot, right on the sole, and then the top, we're gonna let our thumbs spread across. And to create that space in between those little bones, the little fine bones that run along your foot and attach to your toes. So those metatarsals. Everybody loves a little foot anatomy in the morning, right? All right, we're gonna get ourselves into a position where you can interlace your fingers. So you're shaking your hand with your opposite foot. And again, if you can't fit all the fingers in there, that's fine. You can take them in as far as you can. Maybe take as many fingers as you can in there and then stop. Let's see if you're holding your breath. Wiggle your fingers a little bit gently. If that feels good. If wiggling your fingers is excruciating, you don't need to move to that step. All right, and then we're gonna do the foot massage. So you're gonna go back to that thumbs on the top, fingers on the bottom, and let's spread that distance across the top of your foot it might even feel like relief as you do that. It might feel like those pieces haven't moved so well for a while. All right, and then you're just gonna see if you can wiggle your toes a little bit more. See if you can spread them apart. Maybe, maybe not. All right, we're gonna come all the way up. So you're gonna make your way up to standing. And this is where we're going to also, grab our towel, whatever object you've got there as a prop. I'm gonna fold it up so that it's maybe a couple of inches high. You can also do a little bit of a roll because it will squish a little bit. And this is where we're going to do a calf stretch. So this is a really nice one that you can start practicing that also helps to soften up and, and stretch out, if you want to call it that, some of the tissues on the bottom of your feet. So even though we're working on muscles that are down the back of the legs here, we're also working into that connection in the foot. 
So you're going to put your roll in front of you and you're going to line yourself up in front of it with one foot in front. So I'm going to put my right foot in front of this. If you did this with me a couple of years ago, you've done it already. My other foot's going to have free space and then I'm going to step up with that right foot with the ball of my foot. So maybe I'll go this way just to show. Stepping up with the ball of my foot, my heel is staying in contact with the ground. And then you might notice you may have a tendency to kind of shift your weight forward. We're going to see if we can stay nice and vertical. So that may mean that you let the weight kind of let off that roll a little bit and let a little bit more kind of come down through the back of your leg into your heel. So just give that a try. If this doesn't feel like you're getting any stretch at all, I want you to scoop your other foot in a little bit further. That's why it doesn't have a towel in front of it. And that's going to increase your calf stretch. So we're thinking about getting a little bit of length down through here. And if you look at my ankle, it'll, it's making that same shape right now as it was when we were laying down. And I was saying, bring the tops of your feet back towards your shin. <sighs> take a breath notice if everything's getting tense and then I want you to step off that and we're going to move over to the other side so you're going to line up your opposite foot in front of your roll you're going to step up with the ball of your foot and leave the heel down on the floor and then you can adjust the other foot in as far as it feels comfortable but just kind of playing with the feeling of if you step too far, it kind of really takes you into that forward sort of position. So we want to let that weight come down the back of the leg, feeling a little bit of stretch, maybe in the back of the knee, down into the calf, maybe into your foot. Take a breath. Notice if everything's really tense. Okay, we're going to go back to the first side. I'm going to roll mine up a little bit higher because it's squishing quite a bit. So I'm going back to the right side. So we're coming back into our ankle dorsiflexion here. That's what we're working on in this calf stretch. Your right foot is going to come back up. So ball of the foot is on your obstacle, on your prop. Heel is down on the floor. Maybe you're getting a bit of a calf stretch right now. You might be feeling it up here. Maybe you're feeling it more down into the Achilles tendon sort of area. What I want you to try to do now is can you bend your knee on that calf stretching leg, but your heel is going to stay in contact with the floor. So now we're actually getting into a little bit of a pull on a different calf muscle. Whew, these ankles really can use a lot of moves. Straighten your leg back up. Nice. All right, bend the knee again and see if you can bend the knee a couple of times forward on that calf stretching leg and then straighten it without taking your whole body weight forward in order to do that. So you'll notice when my knee bends, the rest of my torso stays relatively stable. Maybe you feel a bit of shaking in the thigh or maybe you notice it in the front of your shin. All right, let's go to the other side. So you're gonna straighten that back up and step away from that. Ooh, see how that one feels? Might notice that in the ankle right now. Left side, if you started on your right. Sometimes everybody starts on the opposite side. So then if you're listening to me, you kind of do the same side. So do whichever side you're not doing, you didn't do last time. Take a breath. We're stepped into that calf stretch. You're finding that place where you can just stay relaxed in the shoulders, still breathing, start to feel a little bit of that stretch down through the back of your lower leg. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to bend that knee forward. So the calf stretching knee is going to move kind of over the toe. It might not go over the toe, but it's moving in that direction. Heel is staying down. So as you bend your knee, you're kind of going into that pushing uphill hiking position. So if you imagine that you're walking up a hill, this would be where your foot would be in this position. You have to push up to take your next step. 
So anyone going for a hike later today, maybe this weekend, this is a great one. Okay, we're still bending the knee and straightening back out one more time. Okay, we're gonna do a double calf stretch. So this one is a little bit of a real feeler. If you have a wall that you wanna use, you can bring a wall in front of your hands or your chair in front of your hands. Otherwise, you can bring your hands on your thighs. You're gonna step both feet up. So this might feel like you're gonna fall over backwards. So that's where you can grab your balance to start with, or you can hinge at the hips just a little bit. Heels are down, both feet are up on your bolster now. And either with your hands on your hips or on your support, you're going to take your sit bones and move them back so that you're bringing that stretch all the way up the back of the legs. So you'll notice I'm not, you know, curving my upper body or kind of keeping this into flexion at the hips and really letting that feeling happen down through the back of the legs. If you feel like you're going to fall right off your bolster, you're going to bring yourself up a little bit. You've gone a bit too far. Double calf stretch. Good. Now we're going to come out of that and you're going to press up and do a heel elevator. So you're going to press into the balls of your feet and on that wobbly surface, you're going to lift your heels and bring yourself straight up. And then you're going to try to lower yourself down. And once you lower to horizontal, you're going to have to go further because you're in your calf stretch, let your heels come down. And we're going to go back into that double calf stretch. So hinging at the hips. and then unhinge and then you're going to start to load the front of the feet and press up and bring your heels up and you're going to do this nice and slow two or three more times so heels down hinge i'm going to do this in front of my chair just for a demo for anyone doing that version heels down and then hinge and just really using that chair to kind of limit how far you might go or helping with your balance. Ooh, a little wobble on the way up there. So why does this ankle dorsiflexion matter? Well, this is part of the move that helps to get us down to the ground in a lot of ways. So we're gonna make this one the last one, and then we're gonna try a squat. So come on up, and you can step away from your chair, or you can keep your chair wall for a bit of support. And we're gonna bend our knees and take our sit bones back and take ourselves down into a squat. And you're gonna see your ankles start to make that same shape. Maybe you can imagine you're squatting down to pick something up from your garden. Maybe you're going to take your feet a little bit wider. So try to change that shape a little bit and find a squat that feels comfortable for you. You don't have to go too low. Try to take your hips off to the side. Maybe one foot forward. Pick one more squat that feels good for you. All right, come back up to the standing. We're going back to those toe moves just for a moment. So with that calf stretching, we encourage the back of our body to kind of loosen up a little bit and come into the game a little bit more. So now I want you to stand with your feet again lined up roughly under your pelvis. So just not really close together, not too far apart. And we're going to do the same thing that we started with. We're going to shift from side to side. So you're going to let your pelvis or your torso kind of move its weight above your feet and that'll shift the weight on your feet and then we're going to do the forward and back so come back to center and now you're going to let your pelvis and your torso shift forward and back it's almost going to feel like a pendulum where the weight goes onto the front of your feet and you can feel your toes sort of breaking and then not breaking breaking your fall, breaking your acceleration. No toe breaking today. And then you can come back. So let's come back to a point that feels about even, where you can roughly feel even weight between the back of your foot, around your heel, 
and the point underneath the base of your pinky toe and the point underneath the base of that big toe. So you can even look at yourself in your camera if you can see it for yourself. You might even be able to see how your hips are lined up over your knee. And we're now going to try to lift our big toe. I can't really zoom in on my right foot. But if you can see it, there is a small amount of lifting and lowering of my big toe happening on the right foot. This is a real challenge for me. Some of you are going to find this really easy. Some of you might be looking at your toe, wondering why your brain's telling it to move and it's not going anywhere. So no matter where you are on that spectrum, see if you can lift and lower that big toe. Big toes moving are a big piece of a lot of the other pieces of your foot moving. So this is a great one to practice. Let's concentrate on the left foot now. So you're gonna forget about your right foot. See if your brain can switch to lifting and lowering your big toe on your left foot. One more. All right, lift and lower all your toes. See if you can actually lift and unweight the front of the foot a little bit. Good. And then let that relax. Forget about your toes, let your brain kind of let that go. And we're gonna come back to our calf stretch one last time. So find your role, find your obstacle, line yourself in front of it, up in front of it. Step your right foot up so the ball of the foot is on your obstacle, your heel is resting on the floor. Shift your opposite foot in until you get that stretch that feels right for you. Pause here for a moment, take a nice deep breath, and then bend your right knee forward. Let it slide forward to that place where you can still keep the heel down. Notice how the weight feels on your opposite foot. Is it shifting around? Has it changed? Has your heel dug in to try to push that calf stretching knee forward? So many things to pay attention to. All right, you're gonna let that go. Give that a break. And let's do one on the other side. Always nice to finish up even. So stepping up on your left side, into your calf stretch, bring that right foot into its position that gets that stretch comfortable for you and then bend that knee. So you're taking that right knee, or not right knee, left knee for me this time, and sliding it towards that over the toe position. Maybe things are shaking, maybe they've started to come online since you woke up. Let your shoulders relax. Notice if your heel is dug in on the other side to push you forward. Can you let that relax a little bit? Good, and then you're gonna straighten that leg back up. Let your ankle in the front of your shin come back to life. And then we're gonna try our standing balance. So we're gonna go back to that very first thing, almost very first thing we started with. I want you to stand comfortably, feet about the width of your pelvis. There's a lot of that today. And then we're gonna balance on one foot. So you're just gonna let your weight shift onto one foot and flex your ankle. So now you can lift that foot, the opposite foot off the floor. Just flexing that ankle can maybe create a little bit of space where now you're balancing. Can you press into that standing leg and up nice and straight through that side? Maybe shift your weight a little bit more into your heel if you feel like there's a lot of weight on your toes. It's a whole lot of instructions for standing on just one leg. You want to make it just a little bit more fun. If the wobble has stopped and you want a little bit more challenge, let's swing that leg that's up in the air. Nice. All right, put it down and let's move to the other side. So same thing, balancing on that right side. Almost finished for the morning, folks. Letting your right foot take your weight, or maybe it's the opposite side if you started on the other. 
just flexing that left ankle and letting that clear the floor maybe. And it might not, if it doesn't clear the floor, that's fine. Just trying to lift that leg, just trying to create that pushing down on the right side and balancing on that or letting the weight shift onto that right can really make a big difference over some time. Whew. All right, see if you can shift your weight back a little bit if it's in the toes. Notice if your ankle's wobbling, has anything changed from the start? All right, you wanna take that spice up a little bit of a notch and make it a bit more fun, you can swing that opposite leg. If you weren't wobbling before, maybe it's gonna be now. All right, and you can step that one down. Maybe feeling like things have gotten a little bit of movement from the hips down this morning. And I think we're all done for our session. Thank you for joining me for class. Tomorrow we're on for yoga. Thank you so much, Anna. I can't believe you think feet, ah, and then you start doing it and you're like, oh yeah, I've got some things to work on. <laughs> so. 33 joints and 26 bones. There's an yeah. awful lot of real estate down there below the ankle. <laughs> yeah. I will, I will confirm that it's true. Mm -hmm. So thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Please join Anna again tomorrow morning, same time, 8.15, as she introduces us to Chi Kong. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Probably not. And fluid movement. Actually, tomorrow is yoga. Qigong is on Sunday. Oh, sorry. Yes, thank you. Yoga is tomorrow. And make sure you check in with us later today. We have Healing Mother with Indigenous Plants with Terry Lynn Brandt at 10 a.m. Bokashi Composting with Holly Marsh at 11 a.m. Creation Care, Gardening for the Birds and Bees with Donna Lang at 2 p.m. And Edible Perennials in Our Landscape um, at 7 p.m. And we are excited to have everybody join us today. So please check back often and we will see you then. Thanks very much, everybody. Thank you.